and welcome to a P5J video about sound. That was kind of pathetic, but I, I just had to do it. I'm going to mute this right now. Um, what I have here is a, a P5JS sketch that is playing a sound file. And this is a first video in a playlist series of videos about working with sound in P5JS, where we'll cover things from playing back music, sound effects, sound synthesis, and playing melodies, uh, beat detection, uh, also uh, cueing things to happen at certain points in the music. Uh, this is my random list of topics in my head right now. But this very first video, all I want to do is kind of start with this idea of loading a sound. So the very first thing that I want to look at with you, the viewer, listener here, is how to load a sound file. Now, there are lots of different sound file formats. Um, I'm going to use uh, sound file format MP3. And the function that I want to use is in, in P5 is this function called load sound. So what load sound does, and in here, the, the argument that load sound requires is a file name. You can actually give it an array of several different file names. If you have multiple, if you have that same sound file in multiple formats, and then different browsers, uh, based on what formats are compatible, we'll kind of like pick the right one, all magically behind the scenes. But I'm going to skip all that, and I'm just going to pass in the MP3 file here. So let me show you the gist of how this works. So um, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go to my Finder and Desktop. I have this. Uh, folder here called play music and in that folder is a mp3 file that is called just like a rainbow by the Colombians. So this, uh, just to give credit where credit is due, this particular, um, this particular track comes, uh, is available on Free Music Archive, uh, Creative Commons license, available for derivative work, so I'm using it in this video. Uh, it's got a nice old-timey sound to it that you already heard. And uh, what I'm going to do is now go to my code, and I realize I already wrote the code for this, so I'm going to quickly delete that code. No, let's quickly delete that code. Uh, quickly delete that code. You didn't see it. You didn't see it. It's invisible. I'm going to, like, men in black, erase your memory <laughs> thing. Um, okay, but anyway, um, so the first thing you need is a variable. So you need a variable to keep track of a reference to whatever you're going to load with uh, load sound over here. So um, you might think, oh, I'll just do something like this, var song equals load sound, and then say file.mp3. This absolutely will not work because uh, the issue with what I've written here is load sound as a P5JS function is not available outside of setup or draw. So another option I might do is, oh, I want song to be a global variable, but what I'll do is in setup, I'll say this. And then I'm going to say song.play. So this might be your kind of instinct here, which is that, ah, what I want to do is load a particular sound and then immediately play it. The thing is, Remember, you and I here in this world that we're in, <laughs> we are programming in JavaScript. And JavaScript is the land of asynchronous callbacks, things happening on their own schedule. So we can't rely on the sound. This large sound file might not actually be ready by the time we get to song.play. It's still going to be loading. So we need some way to guarantee the file is loaded before we ask to play it. And there are two ways to do this. And I wrote these over here. There's the sort of preload way and the callback way. So let me first show you the preload way. So everything in JavaScript, uh, you know, and, and in the world really <laughs> in some ways is about events. And we currently have a setup event and a draw event. Setup happens first, draw loops over and over again. But guess what? In P5, there's a secret event that actually happens before setup. It's like the pre-setup. So that thing is called preload. So what I can actually do is put things. Now, preload is not for just stuff that you want to happen, have happen before setup. Preload is only for things like loading files, loading, loading media, loading things that you want to make sure are finished loading before setup. P5 is a special way of handling this behind the scenes, but anything that you load, load sound, load image, load video. I mean, load video is not a function. I think, I think it's create, create video, but those types of things you can put in preload. So now, if I were to run this, this would work because song.play can be called because load sound is in preload. Now, file.mp3 is not the name of my file, so I'm going to go just grab the actual name of my file and put it in here, whoops, 
And then I should be able to, and let me just actually just rename the file to rainbow right now, just to make things a little bit simpler, looking at the code. Um, and now I'm going to uh, unmute this tab and hit refresh. I love that scratchy record sound. Right? I, I should stop doing the dancing. Um, so uh, yeah, this works. <laughs> I'm gonna, now what I'm going to do actually is in the console here, since song is a global variable, I could just do that. Stop is a function that will stop a particular song from playing. Uh, uh, and then I could also play it again. I'll also mention here, oh, oh, it's very loud. It's very loud. So one thing that I think we should do, I'm having an issue with my video recording sound setup thing, where the uh, volume of the sound is a little bit too high compared to the mic. Uh, people in the chat are telling me to keep dancing, but you watching this as a video tutorial somewhere don't want to see me. I can make a separate oh, dancing only video. Uh, there's also a theory going around the internet that I'm like a centaur or something because you can't see my legs, but I guarantee you that I have actual legs. I'm even wearing shorts today because it's very hot. Okay. Um, although I like the idea of being, a, I don't know, maybe being a centaur is a little bit weird. I write more like a unicorn, a unicorna, a unicornar with a little like horn and some purple hair perhaps would be nicer for me. That'd be more appropriate. Uh, really gone off the deep end here. So what I want to do actually, you know, we're here, I have an excuse now to also show you that I can say other, I can call all sorts of other functions on the particular song variable, like set volume, and I could say 0.5. So this will make the volume, the volume is a number between zero and one, one being at full volume, zero being at no volume. So let me just do that and I can hit refresh and it should be a little bit quieter. I could do a little more text. <laughs> There's a little intro here, I get warmed up, and then my, my body just takes over. So you can hear, it should be quieter now, you should be able to hear me okay. Um, that's one thing you can do. While we're at it, why not just, um, let me stop it for a second. Uh, I should let it play in the background, actually. Let's let it play in the background. Um, while we're at it, I, I might as well show you that I could consider doing things like slider equals create slider. So if I create a slider, then I need a couple things. I need uh, a range between 0 and 1. I want to start at 0.5, and I want an increment of like, you know, 0 0.01. And then I could always say in draw now, song.setValume, slider.value. So this would allow me to, now if I refresh this, I should get a slider here, and I can turn the volume off. I can make it louder. So this is good for me because now I can let this page run and I can keep that slider there. So there's a lot of possibilities in terms of making sound very quickly and easily interactive in the browser with a slider, a button, set volume. This is the basic idea. But I digress I, because I forgot that what I was here for was to uh, talk about now. Okay, so here's the thing. Let me run this again. And I'm gonna actually have it start with a volume of zero just to like not have the sound play for a second. Notice, see that message there? It's there for a while. Let me zoom in on that again. So P5, behind the scenes, that preload function, it can't make the canvas, it can't do any anima animation, it can't do anything until that sound file is finished loading. So behind the scenes, automatically, it just puts this, the text loading there uh, in a div or something so that you can see that something is happening. So here's the thing, you, eventually to making a fancier, more complex, elaborate project, you might actually, <laughs> want to have stuff, you might, first of all, you might have like 50 sound files and you don't want the user to sit there and watch it loading for several minutes. You also might just want to have an animation start. It's fine if it takes a bit to load and it'll play once it's loaded. So this is the idea of a callback. So instead of using preload, there's a way for you to have your sketch and animation begin immediately and allow yourself to then trigger an event, a callback, when the sound has finished loading. So let's look at how to do that briefly. Uh, okay, so uh, where am I? I'm over here. No, I'm over here, yes. <laughs> Gotta work on that button. <laughs> okay, ah, code. Okay, so the difference is now I want to eliminate preload. Eliminate preload, and I'm going to put this back into setup. I can even keep the slider there 
but I can no longer have song.play in setup because um, why can I no longer have song.play in setup? Because, uh, because the sound won't have finished loading yet. So what load sound can have is a second argument. That second argument being the function that's triggered when the sound is ready. So I'm going to just write in here and say, uh, I'm going to say loaded, which means I can now write a function called loaded, and I can say song.play in that function. So look what I'm doing here. I have a global variable called song. I call load sound in setup. Uh, and then I don't actually play the sound until the sound is loaded and this callback is triggered. This is very similar to things that I looked at in some other videos with like load JSON and loading data and that type of thing. OK, so let's see if this works. And you can see. It's working. <laughs> but and we didn't see that. The point is we didn't see that loading thing. So uh, you, you know, I could, if I actually had some sort of animation going on here, and let's, uh, let's have the volume start at 0.5, you can see that well before the sound is playing, the animation has started. So that's um, a reason why you might want to use the callback. <laughs> um, now, now I'm starting to feel like a little bit of a crazy person, like that song is just like looping the beginning of it in my head over and over again. Okay, so how are we doing here? I think we've gotten through, let's see what I've got on my list, little mental list here. We talked about, um, so this is an easy one, play, I've been using dot play. I know if I use dot play, it just plays the song, and when it f gets to the end, it stops. I could also use loop, and loop is going to, you know, it's going to, whenever it gets to the end, it's going to start over from the beginning. So if you have a background track for some type of animation, call loop at the beginning, it will play forever. Um, we looked at set volume, um, and maybe what I'm going to do really quickly right now is look at rate and pan, and then I'm going to do jump and add cue in the next video. So let's quickly just add, um, looking at manipulating the sound with rate and pan. Uh, so um, I'm going to just create a couple more sliders. Uh, slider volume, slider rate, and slider pan. So, uh, and the, I'm actually going to get rid of the volume slider. And I'm going to add slider rate. And I'm going to add a uh, slider pan. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, song dot. Okay, so I want to do a uh, pan. So I'm going to comment these out right now. Uh, and we'll get to in a second. Pan and rate and slider uh, pan and slider rate. OK, so what's going on here? The rate is the speed at which a sound is played back. So let's think about the range of that. Well, if I want it, let's do rate first. If I want it played back at its default rate, that value would be 1. If I want it to be half the speed, it would be 0.5. If I want it to be double the speed, it would be 2. So let's make the rate go between 0 and 3. Um, and uh, let's call song.rate here in draw uh, with the slider. So I'm going to run this. We've got the song playing again. Now, I can pick the second slider. Let me go back here. Oh, and let me make it uh, a little quieter. And let me get rid of the pan slider. OK, so if I want to dance at the regular rate, I'll do that. Now, let's turn it up. Ooh. <laughs> so we can see how you know, at five times the speed, <laughs> we've got like chipmunks territory here. And we've got a little, people in the chat are like talking about me like I'm a total crazy person, which clearly I am. OK, but you can hear it slower now. So I don't know. Maybe I just want to make the, the, the range between 0 and 1.5. So you get the idea here. You can also adjust the rate, and it's also adjusting the pitch at that point. And I'm sure there are clever 
you know, sound magic math formulas to like, speed it up and keep the pitch, but that's not part of the sort of core default P5JS library. And then I can also add the pan. I have no idea if you'll be able to hear this. Now pan means, um, am I going from the left speaker to the right speaker? Uh, 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 panning the, span, the sound back and forth from, you know, if you're wearing headphones, left ear to right ear. So I'll be curious if this works at all in this particular video tutorial. Um, okay, so uh, here we go. Ah, so what is the range? The range is between negative one and one. So negative one. <laughs> By the way, uh, I'd be curious what happens if you watch these videos at two speed. Or, anyway, negative one being left and one being right. So let's put that slider back in, and I'm just going to get rid of the rate right now and put in just that. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I have it at 0.5. Let me put it at 1. Oh. No, no, 0. So I want the default to be at 0. Okay, so listen. You should be hearing the sound in both ears right now. And I'm going to pan it. Now, I can hear on my laptop when it's only coming out of the right speaker. I'm not out of the left. I'm going to pan to the left. And I hear it out of the left, but not at all. So I can pan back and forth, which you can imagine in real time, you could create interesting effects. Okay, everybody. I have now reached the end of this particular <laughs> video about loading sound. So this is just the basics. I'm just kind of getting started here. I'm going to make a lot of videos about different things you can do with sound in the browser in P5.js, but at least we have now loading an MP3 file, playing it back, adjusting its volume, its rate, its playback, all that sort of stuff, figuring out how to load it with preload, loading with a callback, that sort of thing. And in the next video, I'm going to look at the, Q, the jump and add Q function, which I think will be, be some interesting things that you might not be aware of as possible.